Hi again, I'm here today to show you some books that I'm gathering together from my library um, that I am planning on using this year for our study, our American history studies. We're going to study history from exploration and Native Americans all the way to um, modern times this year. We may not get through it all, and if we don't, that means we'll be probably studying history throughout the summer. And that's okay with us because that way we'll just do like unit studies and and until we're done with it. So here I have like workbooks that I've collected. I love to collect curriculum and resources. So these have been really good for my oldest who's an independent learner. So if you have kids that just like to read, answer questions, then this is good for them. Um, and here we have like, this was like a teacher resource. I don't even know where I got this stuff from, but I used a lot of this when I was, uh, homeschooling my oldest, Lizzie. And I used this too when I did American history with her. So a lot of this is fourth to sixth grade, but it could definitely be, uh, customized for younger kids. <clears throat> and I love, love, love this because my my now fourth grader, Sarah, is asking me all this stuff about uh, why, you know, about our rights and why our rights are being taken away and why we have so many laws and all this stuff. And this is really good for them. So I bought all this stuff used or it was gifted to me. Um, the only thing I really bought new on this table are these coloring books that I absolutely love. Because it has information and they can even use that bottom information there for copy work. So if you do like a Charlotte Mason approach, <clears throat> your children can color it in and then copy it. And then um, I have like these... These I, I got from a teacher friend of mine, which I really like. I haven't really looked through them that well, but just the idea of them having them, you know, they could just look back on these cards and even like write a, a uh, essay or write something about, you know, a certain, uh, certain, like the Boston Massacre, okay? So they can definitely use this for just writing and summarizing maybe a book and they get more information out of this. So I've just, over time, co have collected all sorts of color and books. We're probably going to use something like this, but I really would like for them to use a black and white uh, geography type workbook so they can actually draw and trace which I'm learning through the classical conversations method that they should be drawing and tracing and labeling uh, with maps and then I have some Abeka and B BJU Pre uh, B B Bob Jones University books that are about history and a whole collection of them which I I can't ever remember using an entire Abeka history book um, but I definitely look through them read through them they, they give me ideas of what to study with my kids so we have different these Uncle Eric books whatever happened to justice are awesome books the sound and forth the trumpet are also really neat books. They're all based on Christian history, and it's important because now history is being erased. Uh, Christianity, God, anything that has to do with God is being erased from our history books. So we want to be really careful of what we're selecting for our history. And here, I, can't, I don't know if you can see these that well, but here we go. Here we have, I bought these last year.
from Library and Educational Services, and it's an, a great website to get uh, books on history, biographies, books on science, and all sorts of things. And this is really going to help those older kids to supplement whatever it is we're learning about, especially if, if they love reading, and my kids love to read. And these are just Progeny Press. These are um, study guides. So we're going to read these books this year. Sarah Plain and Tall, The Courage of Sarah Noble, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. And we're probably going, this is for my oldest. Actually, this is for my second oldest. And we're probably going to get into those too. Um, now, I like to divide history into different time periods and I have them all out. Just don't mind the background, the background mess, right? Um, history starts with Native Americans and exploration. And this is a really, really cool, um, it's like a, like a magazine, I want to say, Visit Florida, Florida Heritage Publishers. And we received it at Hontoon Island. They had a lot of resources and information on um, just different historical content on how Florida was founded in Spanish uh, colonial heritage, which isn't really taught throughout the nation. It's actually really taught here <laughs> only because we were not um, a British colony, you know. Hey, buddy. How are you? You look awesome. So I'm taking care of kids today, so don't be surprised if you hear background noise. And then, um, that this is like a Paper Dolls colonial era families I got from Usborne Books. And this is just an example. These are Indians, so they're just going to come out like this. They can play with them. Kids love it, especially the girls. And then we have some readers. What was what life was like? Um, the Legend of Blue Bonnet and told in two different. Those two books are told by two different authors. And then, Walk the World Rim, The Sign of the Beaver, um, Adventures in the Unknown Interior of America, which is for older kids. It could be a good read aloud for them. And then we have other books here about the time period. It says Colonial America to Civil War. I think it means, I think it means to the, I'm not sure if I made a mistake on this. But yeah, it could be all the way from Colonial America to the Civil War. And then in between that, there's another theme okay, which is the Revolutionary War. So it's usually Colonial America to the Revolutionary War. And then we have all these books on our presidents, on the Declaration of Independence, on the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and the Jean Fritz books, which are really cool. Kids love them because they're funny. And the Winter at Valley Forge which is really popular right now. Kids love that. And Phoebe the Spy. I received these from, most of these, from the Sunlight Curriculum, which I paid like 800 and something dollars for one year. And I will never do that again. But hey, when you're beginning and you want to get things right, you kind of like invest money and stuff, right? And it's okay. It was an investment. And Cornerstones of Freedom give, like, a lot of resources on history, so a lot of information that's really detailed, okay, for children. And so we have this side over here is more after the Civil War and the growth of our nation. So these are all books that have to do with how America became, you know, prosperous after the Civil War, how... um we rebuilt how there were different battles and wars and how a, a, a normal farmer boy lived 
during this time. So we have some of these books are about the farmer boys. And then, um, or farmer girl, right? And then we have, over here we have books about minorities and the immigration. Okay, and these are uh, pretty cool books because they all, we have some Harriet Tubman there. We have just um, how the, some of them are about the lower class. Oliver Twist, he was a poor orphan boy. So we have one about uh, a... Latino growing up in the city in New York. So we just have different things here. We have one about the Titanic. This one should, yeah, well, it could be in this category. But these are just different books here about that. And then there are some other ones that are like classic books. We just like to read to the kids and they're fictional, you know, fiction and, um, but they also tell us something about how children lived in those days. Or a message, right, about how uh, children lived. I'm almost forgetting. This is my, my small Civil War co collection. And I know I have a lot of books from after the Civil War. But during the Civil War, I think I need to work on this. <laughs> I need to work on get in more of these Civil War books. So, now I know. Now when I go to the library, I'll collect more. So you could also do some puzzles. Here's a Titanic puzzle that my daughter did this year. So you can even do some puzzles that have to do with the time and history. You can use an atlas or like books like these. I just purchased at the library like a bag full for three dollars or something like that which is awesome and then I have um, like an atlas type book and this is really cool for the older kids especially if they want to know more okay um, for the younger ones my mom got this at Goodwill for five dollars you can't beat that this is pretty old but like I said I like old stuff I don't know um, the older the better for for me in history right so um, amazing Americans so there's a whole section here on amazing Americans and here's Pocahontas so I don't think I have enough books on Pocahontas so I would go to the library and probably find some more books but isn't this cute? I mean, you can go anywhere to use bookstores and thrift stores, and you can find stuff like this, and it's already done for you. Uh, we used this type of material for our oceans unit study, and it's pretty neat. So I really hope I've helped you guys with some stuff. And um, this is the end of my video. If you all, you all have any questions, please feel free to email me, okay, email me, okay, I'll be there in a second, so email me at home and hearts, h-o-m-e-n-h-e-a-r-t-s dot com.